Honorable Gaikwad sir, Kalsetti sir, and dear friends. <coughs> uh, thank you, ELITs, for inviting me here. I would uh, like to present before you the kind of initiatives that PMPML has been taking. PMPML is, I know it is a mouthful, Pune Mahanagar Parivahan Mahamandal Limited. And the problems that we face are also immense. Um, <clears throat> previously, there were two departments of two corporations. One was PCMT, that is Pimpri Chinswad Municipal Transport, and the second was PMT, that is the Pune Municipal Transport. And uh, as the cities grew, Pune and Pimpri Chinswad, uh, it was found that there was a lot of overlapping of routes, so manpower was uh, being used unnecessarily, and so a, fine, a decision was taken that both these transport departments will be merged and a company was formed. So this company is PMPML and registered under the Indian Companies Act. Uh, it was formed on 19 July 2007 and these are the major stakeholders. So PMC, that is Pune Municipal Corporation, has a 60% stake, and PCMC, Pimpri Chinswad Municipal Corporation, has a 40% stake. This, in brief, is our vision, to facilitate a sustainable, efficient, safe, and well-maintained transport infrastructure, allowing urban and rural dwellers the opportunity to participate in economic opportunities and access essential services, especially for students and women. And this is our mission. P uh, PMPML caters to a population of about 70 lakh people. The area we cover is more than 1,200 square kilometers. We cover Pune Corporation area, Pimpri Chinswad Corporation area, three cantonment boards, that is Pune Cantonment Board, Dehu Cantonment Board, and Khadki Cantonment Board. And we also provide transportation services to five municipal councils around Pune, and also more than 500 villages. So it is a huge establishment. At present, we have a fleet of 1962 buses. Actually, taking into consideration the population that we cater to, this fleet is very inadequate. As per global standards, one lakh population, there should be 50 buses for one lakh population. If we go by that standard, we are catering to 70 lakh people, so we must have 3,500 buses on road. But in our total fleet is around 1962. So we are functioning on half the capacity. So we have embarked on a very ambitious plan for bus procurement. About that I will tell later. <clears throat> we have 13 depots in and around Pune and Pimpri Chinswad. We have a staff of 9,500 people. We have more than 300 operational routes. Our daily ridership is 1.2 million. So actually our aim is to increase our ridership to about 25 lakh people in the next three to four years. I know it sounds ambitious now, but with the program that we have started, I'm confident that we will go up to 20 lakhs. And our daily earning is 1.5 crores rupees. Uh, now to some of the smart initiatives that PMPML has undertaken. The first and foremost is the electric bus. And I'm proud to say that Pune has the highest number of electric buses on road in India. We have around 25 buses, and the buses have started operating from 8th February. The mandate that was given to us was 26th January. CM sir had given us this mandate. And since it was a new technology, and Pune, had, uh, Pune did not get the subsidy under FAME 2, uh, FAME 1. Uh, there were some issues. So Pimpri Chinswad and Pune Corporation being our stakeholders, uh, we took a decision that we will go for electric buses. 
with funding from PCMC and PMC. Uh, the advantages of electric bus is, are known to everybody. Uh, there is no fuel, no, uh, no fuel emissions, and uh, as they are battery operated, they do not emit any gases that are associated with global warming. Uh, the, it leads to shrinking of carbon footprint and many other advantages. I will not go into it in that detail. But then, when this thought came about that we will go for electric buses on our own, we had to do a lot of research. And uh, thanks to CIRT, which is the Central Institute for Road Transport, we got the technical guidance from them. And the push from both the commissioners, both the mayors, uh, we could put 25 electric buses on road. Uh, the mandate was 26 January, as I said. We got five buses that day, but then it was decided that unless we get all the 25, we will not start the operation. So on 8 February, which is hardly a difference of 10 days, we could successfully put these 10 buses on road. Uh, our, the private operator, uh, this is on GCC model, gross cost contract model. The private operator who does the operation of these buses is Electra Green Tech, which was earlier BYD. And the contract is for 10 plus two, kilo, uh, two years, and with the assured kilometers of 225 uh, kilometers run. Uh, the, initially, when we were formulating the uh, RFP, uh, we took a meeting of the, all the OEMs also. And we took into consideration their preparedness before we floated the RFP. So when we said that we want um, uh, a range of 225 kilometers, at um, a, a single range. So most of the OEMs, uh, they said we cannot do it. So then we scaled our RFP to 125 kilometers uh, on a single charge. But the practical um, performance that we have got is quite good. Uh, the bus goes up to 180 kilometers on a single charging. Uh, you know, Pune is... Uh, in a recent survey, it is the most livable city. And it was judged on many parameters. Uh, and it was found that Pune is the most livable city in India. But when we look at the transport parameters, uh, I'm sad to say that it is uh, 12th on the list. But with the initiatives that we are taken, uh, taking and with the ambitious program that we are going ahead for procurement of buses, I'm sure even in the transport parameter, we'll be in the top three. The range, uh, we basically the trials were very important because it was a new technology. And for this, as I said, CIRT has provided us uh, very valuable guidance. We tested it on three, three parameters. First was the range test. Second was the time required for charging. And the third was the number of units required for charging. And when we took the trials, we had teams from CIRT and PMPML on the bus plus a load of 3.5 tons on that. And the bus followed all the routes that we take. It stopped at all the bus stops so that we could get an actual idea of that. And once we got a clear certification from CIRT, then we went ahead with the uh, buses. There are many features of these electric bus. It's a monocoque chassis. Uh, it caters to UBS2 specifications. The automotive of India standards 153 are followed. There is auto transmission. The bus is air conditioned. And I would like to tell you that uh, the fare for the buses is the same as the fare for the non-AC buses. So there is a lot of load on the buses at present. And with this, we have not stopped with this. Our board of directors has uh, formed a resolution that we are going to go for 500 electric buses, which is the highest anywhere in India. And we will go for this in phases, because uh, the battery prices are going to go down gradually. So we wanted to take advantage of this. So it was decided that first we'll go for 25 buses. Second phase will be 125 buses. Third will be 350 buses. And also now the FAME 2 uh, has been declared by ministry uh, uh, with the DHI ministry, so another 300 buses will be procuring for that. Yeah. 
This is another initiative of uh, PMPML which has received a very good res response. We started the Tejaswini bus service for women. Uh, Pune, as you know, is, a, is an education hub. It is an industrial hub. And it has so many other services to offer to the people. And I have found that the number of women who are working outside their homes is huge in Pune. And transportation for them is a daily hassle. So to ease a bit of their worries, a bit of their troubles, uh, we decided to start a dedicated service for women on 8th March, which happens to be the International Women's Day 2018. So we had uh, new buses which had come in. These were uh, MIDI buses. Uh, we had around 33 MIDI buses which were new. So we thought of uh, starting these buses for women. And uh, so we initially started with 33 buses. And then there was another scheme uh, by government, uh, by Maharashtra government, under which we got 10 crores for buying buses for especially for women. So that was another 33 buses. So we have a fleet of 66 buses which is dedicated for women only. And this is the no highest number of buses anywhere in India where which are dedicated for women only. Uh, <coughs> so this was named Tejaswini Bus Service. And uh, these buses have been operating for the last one year with a tremendous response from women. And we still get a lot of demand from women to start these buses in various other areas also. Uh, on These buses were started on 8 March uh, 2018. And on 8 March 2019, another initiative that our board of uh, directors took was that making these buses free for women on 8 March. First, it was for 8 March uh, 2019, but then it was decided that we'll make this service free for women on every on the 8th of every month. So, for women on 8th of every month, the Tejaswini bus service is free, and I have had got very good responses. In fact, one engineering college for women they declared that whenever they go for industrial trips, they will go on the 8th of uh, any month, so that they get free transportation on these buses. Uh, BRT is another initiative which was take, undertaken by PMPML with the help of uh, both the corporations. BRT, as you know, provides a dedicated lane for buses. And it, has, it is proved wherever BRT is in operation that the travel time is cut considerably. And the, we have the same experience in Pune. Uh, the BRT membership has been going up, the ridership has been going on, going up. Uh, we have around six BRT corridors at present, and another two will be starting shortly. As soon as we get our buses, we will start two more corridors. We have 100 and bus stations, and uh, the total BRT distance is now 67 kilometers, which is quite huge, and we plan to uh, go up to 100 kilometers. Uh, as I said, we have embarked on a very ambitious project to procure buses in the next two years. And this will be the new bus procurement. Uh, we are going for 12 meter CNG buses, 400 total. And uh, Tata Motors has got the contract. The buses will be, we have already given the purchase order and the buses are expected this month. So from June uh, 19 to November 19, in this period we will be getting uh, 400 buses. A second tender which is finalized is 12 meter electric BRT buses. 125 buses. We have already given the, uh, G uh, the finalized the GCC contract and these buses will start coming from July and July and August. We will get 125 electri bu electric buses. Uh, we are also in the process of procuring 440 12 meter CNG BRT buses. All these buses that we are going, going for, for are BRT because we have around 100 kilometers of um, BRT in Pune. And the third tender that we will be releasing shortly is for 
350 12-meter electric buses. Besides procurement of buses, uh, PMPML has also taken a lot of uh, smart IT initiatives. Some of them are below. One is, uh, first is uh, intelligent transit management system. Second is automated fare collection system. Then we have a grievance redressal management system. And we have established, established a command and control center in our headquarters. This is ITMS in brief. ITMS is like we have, uh, we get the live tracking of buses uh, from the ITMS. The uh, riders, they get the estimated travel, uh, uh, they get the ETA, estimated travel arrival, uh, arrival time. And uh, <clears throat> it, uh, we have bus passenger information system. And on board, we have the driver's display unit and the onboard uh, units, which give all sorts of information. All these buses are tracked from our uh, command control center. We have also developed a PMPML web portal, which is an interactive portal. And about 16,33,000 visitors uh, on this portal till now. Uh, it also provides journey planning, online booking of tickets, bo booking of me card, which is a smart card. I'll be talking about it shortly. Uh, we get lots of reports, and the citizens can use it for lodging grievances also. And it is also available in Marathi. Uh, automated fare collection system is one of our very success, uh, successful initiatives. Uh, <clears throat> it was started in 2015. Now we don't have pre-printed tickets on, uh, on the bus. Our conductors have the ETM, which, is the, uh, which gives a small ticket. And uh, we have done this in collaboration with the Central Bank of India. And about 99.5% of our tickets are e-tickets. We don't use the uh, pre-printed paper tickets. This we have done, as I said, with collaboration uh, with uh, Central Bank of India. We have more than 4,000 e-ticketing machines, which our uh, conductors use. <coughs> and we get a lot of useful data from AFCS. It also helps uh, monitor the real-time performance across the depots, the shifts, the routes, the trips, and performance of the conductors. Uh, it is also a real-time monitoring of tickets issued and amount collected. So anytime I want to know what is the income of uh, PMPML up, up to, say, 12 p.m., I can easily get that information. Uh, this is another uh, initiative that we have taken. Uh, it is multimodal interoperability me card. Uh, this was inaugurated by Honorable PM Sir uh, in 2017, uh, but the progress is not as uh, as I had as we had anticipated. Uh, till now, we have distributed around 37,000 me cards, which are smart cards. Uh, there is no need for cash or petty change. That is the best advantage of that. And another thing is, it is a interoperable card. It can be used. Uh, at present, it is closed loop, but there is provision for uh, making it open loop, and it can be used for other modes of transport, like the metro, uh, for private cabs, for car parking, and it can also be used for retail shopping and in restaurants and malls. Uh, as I said before, we have a grievance redressal uh, management system on which all the commuters can register their complaints. They can also give suggestions. Till date, we have received around for, uh, 45,000 complaints and uh, suggestions. And we have made it a system that whatever suggestions, complaints we get from, from the GRMS, we try to make more modifications in our functioning. And uh, we have established a command and control center in our headquarters, which is 18-seater uh, and uh, fully automated. There are <coughs> uh, daily monitoring of the buses is done from here. And we have had a lot of visitors from all over India and from other parts of the world also who have come and seen our command and control center. So these were the initiatives that we have taken. And uh, as Gaikwad sir and Gera sir said that ethanol also can be another alternative fuel. And we are in search for 
uh, other uh, smart uh, initiatives also. So if we get good competitive prices for ethanol, we are open to that. And uh, another initiative that we are going to take is uh, use of bio CNG. Uh, this is a unit which is established in Lonavla. And um, the, C the fuel that they are making is from the waste material that is generated by the restaurants, all the wet, uh, uh, wet garbage. And from that, they are making bio CNG. And we are in the process of uh, using that for our buses also. Thank you so much.